Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the North Dallas Plano Crew Focus Group meeting. If you can uh, hear me, give me a little thumbs up. Yes, yes. Y'all can hear me? Yes, yes. Okay, thumbs up. Thank you, Dion. All right. Good morning. It's uh, April 21st, 2023. We're very glad you're with us this morning. Our agenda this morning, we'll start out with success stories. We'll see if anybody has any good news to share. We'll then go to our 30-second introductions. Uh, we'll then go to committee reports. We'll hear about workshop, job fairs, practice interview team, the interview success workshop, the career tip of the week. And then we will have our main event, which should be very interesting this, uh, this morning, uh, around the top of the hour. For those people on Zoom, please, any questions you have, please use the uh, chat box. Uh, and we'll be sure to get those questions answered to the uh, asked to the speaker. For those on Facebook, good morning and welcome. Thank you for joining us. If you have any questions, please put your information in the comment field. Please note this event is being recorded and is currently live on Facebook. The recording will be on the Career DFW Facebook page and the Career USA YouTube channel for others to view in the future. By participating in this event, you give consent for your name and picture to appear. Please note that any comments you put in the Zoom chat window will not appear in the recording. Well, good morning, everybody. My name is Jeff Morris. Back in 2007, I started, took over facilitating and leading the North Dallas Plano Career Focus Group. The group's been around since the late 1990s. Like I said, I took it over in 2007 when the prior leader uh, got a job and said, who wants to take over? In 2008, I launched a website called careerdfw.org, a website to help those who are unemployed in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. In 2012, I launched a second website, careerusa.org, to help those around the United States. I have written a book called What I've Learned About Your Job Search that you may not know. It is available on Amazon, or if you see me in person, I always have copies with me. <clears throat> and since 2017, I've been a member of the practice interview team, also known as the Pit Crew, and you'll hear more about that in just a moment. Well, we'd like to start the meeting off with good news. Do we have any landings, any success stories out there that people would like to share? I can share one. You have one? I, we've got one here. Yes, this is Walt Glass. Uh, I don't know very many details. Uh, Austin Price uh, sent me an email this morning. He's scheduled to do the interview success workshop, which I'll talk about in a few minutes on Tuesday. And he has landed at Quest Diagnostics working for their lab. If you look at his resume, you won't understand a word of it. It's got so many technical <laughs> terms. But anyway, that's all I know. I know he starts soon, probably next week. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Anybody else? Any other landings? Any other successes? All right, well, let's move on here. Let's see here, get the slide moved correctly. All right, what we'd love for everybody to do now is uh, open up your chat box. And in the chat box, we'd like you to put your name, comma, phone number, comma, email address, comma, position you're looking for, comma, two or three target companies. You can add your LinkedIn address if you'd like, and then hit the return key. What I will do is I will use this to update the roster. I'll use this to, we'll have some, we've got some handouts that'll go out this afternoon about chat GBT, we'll have those going out. So as long as I have your information, I'll be able to get that information in there. Um, for everybody here in the room, as long as you fill out the little slip of paper, we'll make sure we get you on the roster and get you there. For those watching on Facebook this morning, <clears throat> if you wanna put your contact information into the comment field, please do so. I will go and delete it immediately after the meeting so it doesn't hang out there forever and ever. So I'll put 30 seconds on the clock. If you're still uh, typing your information in, please continue to uh, get that in there. And uh, we'd love to, well, like I said, I'll use this to update roster. When you get that rock, when you get that email this afternoon from me, please look it over, see who you know on there. See if you know somebody 
uh, that's looking, you know, if they see a position that they're looking for something, uh, please let uh, please let the group know, see how you can go help somebody uh, by one of the companies they've seen in there. I see like Wells Fargo, Splunk, uh, Citibank, any of those companies. If you have a contact, please help somebody out. All right, what we want to do is for those people that are here in person, I want to give them an opportunity to give their 30 second introductions. So let me get them up here so you can see them and do this. And whoever wants to go first, <clears throat> uh, turn the mic on. Is it on? Just flip a little button. There we go. Yep. I am uh, Craig Campbell, and I am seeking a position uh, in an in house corporate real estate transaction role. Um, major companies that uh, they're referred to oftentimes as a tenant or end user. So uh, negotiate leases, find new, new locations for them to do business in and out of. Okay, and your name is? Craig Campbell. It is. <laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Chandler Kim. I'm a technology marketing and partnering executive. I help companies grow by optimizing their marketing and partnering strategy. Uh, my target companies this week are UiPath, uh, which is a uh, robotic process automation company, and another uh, cybersecurity company called Mimecast. Um, I have contacts at Nokia, where I used to work. If anybody uh, has them on their target list, be happy to chat with you about them and uh, uh, talk with you about them. I was with Nokia for many years. My name is Chandler Kim. Good morning, everyone. My name is Anthony Archery. I am a senior retail manager slash merchandiser. I'm here to help you with any particular problem you might have. Again, Anthony Archery. All right. Well, hopefully y'all were able to hear that because I know we've had a problem the last couple of weeks and I think I figured out this week how to let their audio be heard. So that way- um, that The mic's loud and clear now, Jeff. Oops. Is my is there a mic up with your the, the hand mic is it, it sounds great. And how about this mic? Sounds this great too. Okay, all right, good, very good. Finally figured it out. All right, uh, let's see here. We'll move on. If you know somebody who's unemployed, please let them know about Career DFW or CareerUSA.org. Two totally free websites. They don't collect any personal information. They're just here to help you land your next great opportunity. So if you know somebody who's unemployed. Let them know. If you know somebody who just recently lost their job, let them know about the uh, one-page handout uh, right there on their front page. They can click, I just lost my job. What do I do now? Uh, great little one-page handout that will help people in their job search. One of the things you'll find on the Career DFW uh, website is a group of calendars. It has all sorts of uh, different events that are going on. The pink events are job fairs. The, yeah, the gold events are special workshops that are happening. Anything in blue or groups that are meeting in person, the ones that are in uh, purple or those uh, webinars that they, people can attend from anywhere around the United States. All right, let me talk a little bit about the practice interview team. What channel? You want to talk about the practice interview team? Why don't you talk about it? <clears throat> so the practice interview team is a unique opportunity to get feedback on your interviewing skills. Typically, the way it works is you submit a request for a practice interview for a job you're already either applied to or one that you're interested in. Perhaps that's a similar kind of position. Uh, along with your resume, uh, you get on the schedule, um, and then you come in and you do a or either on Zoom or in person an actual uh, interview for that role with a panel of usually two or three uh, folks who volunteer who have previous hiring experience, and you go through an actual interview process for that role. After that is done, um, there is a feedback session where uh, it discussed um, your answers and how you handled things and perhaps things to think about, things you did well. Uh, it's really very helpful to help improve your interview skills. Um, I am a, I'm both a participant uh, as well as a, a, a interviewer uh, on occasion. And I found it personally to be very rewarding and very helpful for my interview skills. So certainly recommend everybody uh, do that. 
Chandler, thank you very much. Uh, all you need to do is just send a resume, send a job description, send it to dallaspitcrew at gmail.com. They'll schedule those interviews Monday through Friday. Uh, and they'll get to you as soon as they can. The pit crew is also meeting in person on the first and third Wednesdays of the month. They're meeting in person at Christ United Methodist Church is where, where we're at right now in person, the corner of Parker and Coit. On the second, fourth, and fifth Wednesdays, they're all, we are online. So uh, we'll do an online interview for people uh, to be able to watch an uh, online interview. Uh, when we do the first and third Wednesdays here in person, there is no online option. All right, let's hear from Walt Glass about the Unibrew Success Workshop. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome. I hardly support the pit crew and the practice interview team and the mock interviews that you have. I also uh, decided that there's something else that we can do with our interviewing skills, and that's really learning how to sell ourselves. So I, in 2000, can't believe it's been 23 years that I founded the Interview Success Workshop and it's based on the fundamentals of selling, who we are, what we do, and how we help, the three things that companies are buying. So since we're in a sales selling situation, then how do we go about selling ourselves? Many candidates don't really sell. They respond. They talk about their actions, a lot of the things about what they do, maybe a little bit about their soft skills and characteristics. And I see very little inclusion of the fact of the value that we can bring to a corporation, to a department, and to a particular company. So putting that together <clears throat> back in 2000, all I did was uh, go through some research, did a deep dive since I flunked my own interview when I decided to do this, and came up with this three-legged stool as the model. And the interview success workshop, which is free, is to help us learn how to sell ourselves and to differentiate ourselves from other candidates. Uh, you'd be surprised at how often the same answers come from candidates, the same generic type responses, which is not gonna get us really anywhere. And it certainly doesn't differentiate us from other candidates. So <clears throat> look me up on LinkedIn under Walt Class. The about section will tell you about the workshop and give you some more details. I handle it on Zoom. And I schedule it, I reserve uh, 9 to 11 on Tuesday, Central Time. And I'll also schedule others depending on demand. It, it is free. It, there's no cost to you. And it's a way that you can understand really how to sell. Then you can practice again with me. You can do the fundamentals. We can do more like a real interview with items off the job description and the resume. I'll practice with the pit crew. I mean, how many times do you think you need to practice before you gain that confidence. And it's certainly more than one. So I would invite you to send me that email <clears throat> with some information on it and I'll get you registered. We'll schedule a date and we can have some fun while we're learning. It's not just gonna be a hot seat for you. It's just gonna be a learning experience. I call it learning without squirming. Is it interviewing confidence that we lack? Well, I can give you this fact. It's the interview success workshop that'll put you on track and we can stop taking Prozac. Oops. Oh, sorry about that. We're down to my applause there. Hold on, where we go? <laughs> yes, we need our applause. You just remember, I mean, one of the things, and I didn't mention this before, the practice interview team, Walt's interview success workshop. You gotta remember your LinkedIn profile, your resume, are not gonna get you a job. What, what is gonna get you, what, it, what they do get you is a phone call. How well you practice your interviewing skills, that's what's gonna get you your next job. All right, it's time to hear about the uh, career tip of the week. And there's a new tip every uh, Saturday afternoon on the Career DFW or, or careerusa.org website. Uh, Rosanna is gonna read this week's tip. So good morning and thank you for being with us today. Good morning, Jeff. Good morning, everybody. All right, this week's tip of the week is, is uh, dated April the 16th of 2023, and it's how to spot a toxic culture from a job ad. This article is by Mark Murphy. There are two ways to end up working in a truly terrible company culture. 
The first is to work for a good company whose culture is just a terrible fit for your personality. The second is to end up in a culture that any rational person would consider toxic. You can easily avoid the first problem, working for a good company that's a terrible fit for your personality by simply understanding the types of cult corporate cultures and knowing your own personality, avoiding those companies. The online test, what's your organizational culture, reveals that there are four primary types of corporate cultures. The social culture fosters strong interpersonal relationships, collaboration, and a friendly atmosphere, creating a sense of belonging and loyalty among employees. The dependable culture values stability, efficiency, and process adherence, ensuring consistent quality and performance through employees' commitment to the following established protocols. The enterprising culture emphasizes innovation, creativity, and merit-based competition, encouraging employees to think out, of the, think out of the box and challenge the status quo for continuous growth. And then the hierarchical culture is defined by a clear organizational structure, well-defined rule, excuse me, well-defined roles, and a focus on power and authority, driving employees to compete for promotions and recognition within a controlled environment. Now that you know the types of corporate cultures, all you have to do is be honest about your own preferences. If you're someone who wants clear boundaries between your professional and personal life, you probably won't like the social culture. If you, if you thrive on creativity, spontaneity, and flexibility, you might feel stifled by the strict processes of the dependable culture. If you love predictability and structure, you're unlikely to love the fast paced nature of an, of an enterprising culture. If you're seeking a highly collaborative atmosphere, you may feel constrained by the top-down decision-making of a hierarchical culture. The second way to end up in a terrible corporate culture is to end up in one of those environments that everyone sees as toxic. For that, you'll need to look for certain phrases in job ads. Here are five phrases that often appear in job ads and that signal a potential problem in the company. Phrase number one, fast-paced environment. This phrase can often be a red flag, especially as it indicates that the company expects employees to work at a rapid pace with little regard to work-life balance or burnout. Phase two, must be available 24 seven. It's not hard to see that this phrase implies the company expects employees to be accessible around the clock, which will almost certainly cause burnout and an unhealthy work-life balance. Phase number three, phrase number three, high tolerance for ambiguity. Being adaptable is great, but when you see this phrase in a job ad, it is an indicator that the company lacks clear direction, excuse me, lacks clear communication or defined goals and might have a chaotic work environment. Phrase number four, flexible schedule. No one would dismiss the need for employees to be flexible. But this phrase can indicate that the company does not respect employees' personal time and boundaries, ensuring unpredictable work hours and constant changes. And then phrase number five, must thrive under pressure. We all want to be the kind of person who strives under pressure, but when you see this phrase in a job ad, it can signal that the company often operates in crisis mode with employees expected to regularly manage high stress situations without adequate support. The landmark study on new hire failures makes clear that attitude drives most hiring failures. This means that while you want to choose a good environment to showcase your skills, finding a culture or attitudinal fit is even more important. Job ads often do a good job of subtly reflecting a company's true culture, so read them very carefully. And when you see a phrase that feels wrong, trust your intuition. Well, this is this week's tip of the week. And again, it's dated April the 16th, and it's how to spot a toxic culture from a job ad. Have a fantastic weekend, everybody.
Rosanna, thank you. Yep, Rosanna, thank you very, very much. I think it was, that's a lot, a lot of good things you can take out of that article. Jeff, yes. can I add some add on to that? Yeah, go ahead. <clears throat> I actually went to the website for Is that Mike. On? Yes, it's on. Yeah, I went to the website for Mike Murphy. There's a couple of interesting tools that they had. One is they have some free assessment, very short assessments, but it, it, it's used to describe like a leadership culture, uh, uh, leadership styles, organizational culture, communication style. So these three little quick quizzes can help us determine what we like. It also can determine how we would like our target company to be. So what style of leadership do we look for? What style of culture do we look for? What style of communication? And very brief, and it gives you some information about that. And so it might be worthwhile to check out that particular tip of the week online and get that URL address and take those quizzes and take a look at them. It might help you in describing as well as understanding your targets. Thank you very much, Walt. And I'll include, I'll go back and I'll get those links and I'll uh, put them in the uh, email I put out this afternoon to everybody. All right, uh, hopefully everybody needs to eat lunch. Otherwise you're starving yourself. So come join us uh, for lunch today at Jason's Deli, uh, 4801 West Parker Road in Plano. It's on the Northeast corner of Parker and Preston. Come join us. This is an opportunity for us to get to know you better, for everybody to get to know everybody better who's there. So uh, come join us today, Jason's Deli. They've got everything, soup, salad, huge salad bar, uh, whatever grabs you come join us for that. All right, uh, in just a couple of minutes, we're gonna hear our main event today will be with Rusty Wright. He's gonna talk about chat, oop, I got that misspelled there, chat GPT for job search success. I'll get that fixed here. Uh, so that'll be in just a second. I wanna mention upcoming sessions the next two weeks. Next week, uh, Sarah Jacobs from the Thomas Edward Group will be with us to talk about recruiters, lifting the curtain. She's going to talk about what she does as a recruiter, what her firm does as a, a recruiting firm, and maybe things you may or may not be aware of. If you've got questions you'd like to ask a recruiter, this is a great opportunity to reach out and do that. So Sarah will be with us next week. And then uh, on May 5th, the first Friday of the month, we will do open forum. We'll talk about whatever it is you would like to talk about. So, uh, you know, gather your questions and bring them with you that on then. All right, I still haven't fixed this yet because I'm in the middle of doing too many things doing live, but uh, I want to thank, uh, you know, I saw this presentation a few weeks ago. I think everybody's starting to see more and more things about chat GPT. If you didn't happen to see the uh, um, 60 Minutes article this past Sunday night that uh, the head of Google did all about BARD, which is their AI system, uh, it will either scare the pants off of you or you'll be excited about the possibilities. So, uh, Rusty, I'll let you introduce yourself and you can uh, tell people who you are, what you do, and how you can scare us all. Absolutely. <laughs> let me just get uh, the presentation up and running here. Make sure our technology is working okay. Hey. Okay. So Jeff, can you let me know if we're seeing the presentation okay? Yeah, just great. Fantastic. Uh, so first of all, good morning, everyone. Thank you, Jeff, for inviting me to uh, present today on ChatGPT. Uh, I'm hoping by the end of this, your curiosity will be sparked uh, to go out and explore how this technology can not only help with your job search, but in other areas of your life. A uh, little bit of background about myself. Um, uh, I am not a, a tech guru. I am not an, an AI expert. Uh, I am like you in job search. Uh, and I have come from a global marketing background working for a number of large companies, a number of large brands, where part of my job has always been to look forward and try and understand what are the trends and the technologies that are gonna be changing the way consumers are, are interacting with, with brands and companies and, and how it changes their behavior. And, and so my interest in ChatGPT was actually one of self-preservation because as I saw this technology emerging, I knew that this was going to be changing 
uh, the work environment that I was going to be in for my next job, and also how my workers uh, were using this technology in their their day to day uh, life. Uh, so I developed this presentation. Uh, the first one was given to another executive networking group about five weeks ago, and there's been a slight evolution. So this uh, presentation is really geared for someone who is new or maybe a, a beginner intermediate to this technology. And what I'll be trying to do today is demonstrate some of the practical applications of how you can use, the, use this in your job search as soon as you get off your call today. Um, but also importantly, I wanna talk about some of the limitations that you need to be aware of. So as you're using the tool, you're, you're understanding what it's capable of and also what it's not capable of doing for you. We're gonna spend a bit of time about talking about prompt creation. So just like uh, having the ability to ask a really great question is important, uh, the ability to craft a really clear prompt is equally important to be successful with this technology. And at the end, I'm going to provide a, a prompt template that Jeff will be able to send out to all of you and it is pre-populated with all the prompts that you're gonna see today, along with a number of other ones. And you'll just be able to copy and cut and paste and insert some of your own information uh, to begin experimenting with. Big caveat that I always share is that this technology is evolving and changing very rapidly. And so your experience in interface with ChatGPT or, or any of these platforms uh, may be different uh, from some of the examples that you're going to see today. Uh, and especially for those of you who may be watching this on YouTube in the future, uh, if you're watching two months later or a year later, uh, you can pretty much count on this technology is, is going to be in a very different stage at that point. So let's talk about uh, AI and specifically chatbots. This technology has actually been around longer than I have. Uh, the first chatbots came out of MIT in, in 1966. So they're, they're actually that old. Um, some of us are old enough to remember when an IBM computer named Deep Blue uh, beat a grand chess champion back in the 90s. But for the most part, AI has kind of been this underground tech that occasionally we hear about, but has not made uh, front page news. That has started to change uh, in the last couple of years as there's been a race to develop these large language models. Uh, as of 2021, there were more than 24 that were in development. And as you look at this chart, you know, there are logos that you recognize like Google and, and Meta, but you can see that this activity is happening not only here in the US, uh, but also in China, in South Korea, and Canada. So the race has been on, and, and this number now, I'm sure, has exponentially grown since 2021. Uh, but the first one to kind of break through was a technology called ChatGPT, which became available to the public last November. Uh, prior to that, there were developers that were utilizing it and experimenting with it, but um, it, it sort of hit uh, front page news uh, in November of last year. And so I thought I'd begin with, with the definition of what ChatGPT is. And, and to do that, I actually interviewed ChatGPT and I asked it to describe itself and what it can do in simple language in three sentences or less. And so you see that definition on the screen in front of you, but maybe a different framework that I'd like to give you to think about is uh, imagine having a tool that had been trained on every encyclopedia in 40 or more languages that had read every annual report and analyst report, every New York Times article, every Reddit thread. And so now imagine a tool that you could ask questions to that wasn't just going to parrot a pre-programmed response but was going to go out and look at the body of information and connect the dots. And so an example I like to give is, if I tell you my favorite sandwich is peanut butter and you know what the next word is going to be. 
And that's a little bit of how this technology works is uh, there are these large word clouds that it is able to go out to through these neural connections and come back and piece together the information uh, that makes the most sense for us. Now, it doesn't always make sense, and it, it's important for you to be aware of this. If you go to the landing page for ChatGPT, you will see these warnings right away. So the first is that it may occasionally generate incorrect information. And part of that is because it's been trained on the internet and we all know how accurate all of the information on the internet is, right? So garbage in, garbage out. If it's finding bad information out there, there's the potential that it may use it. Secondly, it may occasionally produce harmful instruction or biased content. So there is a famous story of a New York Times editor who was a beta tester for Bing. And in the course of having a conversation with the chatbot, the chatbot uh, tried to convince the editor that his wife was not faithful to him, that he was cheating or she was cheating on him and not worthy of a relationship and that they should get a divorce and that the editor should start a relationship with the AI chatbot. Um, so obviously not what Bing wanted the chatbot to do, um, and they've taken steps to try and limit that behavior, but you still may see that kind of occurrence. The other very important thing to understand, especially if you're using the free version of ChatGPT that's out there, is that it has limited knowledge of the world and events after September of 2021. That is the, the cutoff date that it was programmed with. There is a new GPT-4 uh, that is available uh, as a subscription that has some more updated data and the ability to search the internet, but that too is, is not yet perfect. And so if you're looking for information that you know, happened yesterday or last week, um, you need to you know, ha have a cautious sense of curiosity with the results that you get. One thing that's happening for sure is the adoption is unprecedented. And so if we compare it against some of the platforms that we all know, we can see how long it took for these different technologies to reach 1 million users. So when Netflix debuted in 1999, it took them three and a half years. Facebook in 2004, it took them 10 months to get to a million users. ChatGPT took five days. And in February of this year, it had more than a billion visits to its website, uh, which is creating some growth challenges, as you can imagine, when it's got that kind of volume. So beyond ChatGPT, there are, are all of these platforms. Uh, Jeff mentioned Google Bard. Uh, I am a beta tester for Google Bard. Uh, but the ones that I'm going to be focusing on today are the two technologies that use the platform created by OpenAI. Uh, they are Microsoft Bing and ChatGPT. Now, Microsoft uh, was an early investor in uh, the company OpenAI. And because of that, they've been able to incorporate this GPT technology into their Microsoft Bing browser. And so one of the things to know about Bing is is first of all, you can interact with it either through voice or text, which means that you can actually talk to it the way that you talk to Alexa or Siri uh, to do your input. It also utilizes OpenAI's GPT-4 technology. So this is the latest version of GPT that they've released. Uh, so again, you're getting all of that historical information uh, pre-September 21, but it's also able to search the current internet to try and get more recent results for you. It has a word input limit of 25,000 words. And so if you're taking a doctoral dissertation and dropping that in and asking it to summarize, um, you, you probably will be able to do that at 25,000 words. However, it does have a limited depth to the number of questions that you can ask it on a single subject. And this is perhaps due to the issues that it had with that New York Times editor. Uh, currently, the, the limit is 20 questions. When I did this presentation uh, four weeks ago, that limit was five questions. And then two weeks ago, it moved to 15 questions. 
And now it's up to 20 questions. So they're, they're trying to experiment and, and find the right balance of, of how deep to allow the AI to go. It does require you to download a Microsoft Edge browser. So if you're an Apple user like myself, uh, you might not have this on your system and might need to download it. But one great thing about Bing is it is also an image generator. So it has a creative mode uh, that allows you to do a text input and create whatever image you can think of. So if you want a PowerPoint image that is a purple squirrel with a gold tooth riding a motorcycle up the Eiffel Tower, uh, it can create that for you in probably under a minute. Uh, one thing that they tout with Bing is that it passed the bar in the top 10%, which definitely means that it is smarter than I am. So now let's talk about its slightly older cousin, ChatGPT, uh, which is different in that you can only do text input for ChatGPT currently, so you, you're going to need to type. Uh, and the free version utilizes OpenAI's GPT 3.5 technology which believe it or not, is not that old. I think it debuted late uh, January or early February. So it's, it's only a couple months uh, old. You can pay for GPT-4. Uh, it's a service called ChatGPT Plus that's available for $20 a month. It gives you access to that version. And it also gives you priority uh, access to the server if they are having capacity issues. If you're using the free version, please know that you're getting that historical data that is pre-September 2021. And you do have a word input limit of 3000, which generally I haven't found to be a problem, but if you are working with larger pieces uh, of text or data, uh, that might be a challenge for you. Unlike Bing, uh, you have an unlimited question depth. So you can keep drilling down and keep drilling down beyond 20 questions if you really need to. Truthfully, I've, I've never had to go beyond 20 at this point. It's great because it's accessible from any browser. You can use it on your iPhone, your iPad, your laptop, your desktop. Uh, you don't need a, a specific uh, browser installed on it. However, you can expect to experience occasional site capacity issues. So with more than a billion people uh, going to the server, uh, you may encounter issues uh, with it either running slow or going to the site and, and it giving you an apology, but they're currently at capacity. ChatGPT also passed the bar, uh, but in this case, it passed in the lowest 10%. Uh, unfortunately, it means it's still smarter than I am. So you might say, how can I actually use this technology to help with my job search? So imagine you had uh, the world's best personal assistant uh, who was super knowledgeable sitting right next to you. Um, you know, there are lots of different phases of your job search that you might think about. Uh, and one is, you know, we're all out there looking at different companies and probably doing some research on those companies. So we can ask ChatGPT or Bing to act as a corporate researcher. So as an example, here's a prompt that I engineered. Uh, I, I told ChatGPT, I want you to act as a corporate researcher. Tell me about the company X. For example, how many employees do they have? How much capital have they raised? What is their vision and mission? Who is their CEO? And provide this information in bullet points. So a couple of things before we see what the results are. Um, first of all, I started off telling ChatGPT what mind frame I wanted it to think in. I told it I wanted it to be a corporate researcher. Um, that's actually very important for this technology is you wanna give it that scope, that framework. Then, you know, I asked it about company X and then I gave it examples, things that it can start to pull from. And so hopefully when I see the results, it's not only going to give me the examples that I asked for, but other things that might be related. So that whole peanut butter and jelly analogy that I gave you earlier, it's going to kind of try and complete the dots on that. And then I said at the end, provide the information in bullet points. So I, I gave it the output that I wanted. So let's see what ChatGPT did. I, I put my former company, Mary Kay, where I worked for eight years, a company that I knew really well, and I was comfortable validating the data. 
And so you can see that it said here uh, that, you know, when it was founded, where it was founded and where it's located, how many countries it operates in, how many employees it has. Now, Mary Kay is not a public company, it's private but it still went out and it found a Forbes article that estimated the size of its business to give me that context. It gave me the vision and mission statement. Generally, it did a pretty good job, except for one thing. The very last bullet point, it says Mary Kay's CEO is David Hall. He's been CEO since 2006. Now here's that issue where ChatGPT only has knowledge through September of 2021, and it did not know that David Hall had retired as CEO in November of 2022 and had been succeeded by Ryan Rogers. So um, in this case, I'm gonna give ChatGPT a, maybe a B or B, B plus on, on the information that it provided me with. If a company is public, um, one great thing is that ChatGPT can go in and look at annual reports, look at analyst reports, look at 10Ks, and pull up any publicly available information to show you things like historic growth or profit or metrics that you might want to look at that would be contained in a 10K document. So as an example, as an example, I wrote a prompt that said, create a table comparing the following companies, Volkswagen, Toyota, Tesla, show historic sales evolution from 2018 to 2021 in US dollars because I wanted to see what happened during the pandemic, both to their sales and their profit. Include a column to show the gross margin percent evolution. Um, so you see at the beginning, I, I told it I wanted a table output and we'll talk about why I did that in a minute. So let's see what ChatGPT did with this one. Ah, it gave me something that looks like an Excel table. And indeed, one of the things that I can do is export this to Excel. I can cut and paste this, or you can even tell ChatGPT, make this exportable and it will create a button where you click and it copies and pastes that information for you. So it looks like it's given the companies that I've looked for, the years that I've looked for, the sales and the gross margin percentage, all of that looks fantastic. But there is one catch you need to be aware of. So you may recall I said ChatGPT has data through September of 2021. Well, how did it give me a full year projection for uh, all of these companies for their sales? It didn't. So what it did was it guessed. And you have to be aware that there may be situations where ChatGPT is trying to fill in the blanks, especially with this more recent information, and may occasionally give you that inaccurate data that it is warning about. So a couple of tips that I'd like to uh, suggest for you, especially if you're running numbers or very specific facts. Uh, one thing you can do is a follow-up question to ChatGPT, which is ask it, what are your sources? And if ChatGPT comes back and says, uh, I've pulled the following data from um, annual reports or 10Ks or analyst reports, that's a good indication that it's gone to some pretty good sources for you. If it comes back with a response that says, as an AI model, I don't have access to this information and I have simulated results, that would be a red flag for you that you might not have the correct information. The other tip I would give you is after you run a query, there's a little button at the bottom that's fantastic. It's called regenerate response. Click that and see if it gives you the same numbers twice. If you're getting the same numbers, that's probably an indication that it's, it's going to some reliable, repeatable resources. If you get different numbers, there are some possible explanations. Sometimes it goes to a different source that might be restating the numbers, or it might be converting numbers from Euro into the US and might be using a different exchange rate. But in any event, these are some quick tips, tips to help you kind of um, validate and check, especially if you're using numbers. For those of us who work at the executive level, um, many of us are used to a term called a SWOT, which is an acronym for strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. 
And you can ask ChatGPT to create a SWOT for you so that you can understand the company that you're interviewing for. Um, so here's an example prompt where I asked ChatGPT to please create a SWAT, a SWAT in tabular form for JCPenney's. And so we see that uh, it did indeed give us the tabular form here broken into the four quadrants of strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And this starts uh, to give me uh, a reference point for understanding the company and maybe some things that I wanna do a deeper dive on. So for instance, I, I look at weaknesses and I see that it says here that they are struggling with declining sales and profitability. That, that might be something that I, I either wanna explore as I'm talking to the headhunter or go in and, and do some deeper research myself and, and try and understand is that coming from a geography or a channel of their business or a product category so that I can sound a little bit more knowledgeable about what their pain points are when I actually get into that interview. Another thing, and we talked about this earlier in today's session is um, uh, understanding what you do, who you are and how you help and how you translate that into a personal branding statement. Uh, lots of us get on these Zoom conversations and we have to do introductions and we try and do a 30 second introduction or a 90 second introduction, but how many of those introductions are really memorable? Um, there is a speaker out there by the name of Paula Calise and, and she talks about the art of hello and crafting a personal branding statement that's uh, very memorable. Well, I, I created a prompt this week that actually uh, takes that thinking and also merges it with what Walt Glass was talking about with the I am, I do, and I help. And so I asked ChatGPT to pretend to be a career coach and help me craft five creative and unique branding statements. The statement should begin with an I am, I do, or I help statement, and each one needs to be less than 10 words and should be based on the following skill sets. And here's where you would drop in your superpowers, your skill sets that make you unique. And so let's see what ChatGPT came back with. Um, so we see the five that I asked for here and, and some of them are, are just okay. You see the first one there, it says, I am the marketing maven who creates buzz. Um, I didn't necessarily like that, but as I went down the list, uh, number four, I am the white space whisperer, finding untapped opportunities. That's not too bad. But number five, I really loved. I do more than follow trends. I said that. Uh, and I thought that was really, really powerful. And uh, maybe I could have come up with that myself, but boy, it really helped me with the brainstorming. And for those of you who may be struggling with that, you know, once Walt helps you figure out the I am, I do, I help, this can be another tool that helps you translate that into eight words or less. Uh, beyond personal branding, um, you can also look at emerging trends, especially some of you who may be switching industries and may not be familiar with trends in the new territory that you're moving towards. So you can, for instance, ask ChatGPT, what are the 10 emerging trends in the energy, the clean energy sector? and it will give you a list of those 10 trends. Well, then you can take it and drill down and say, please give me examples of companies that are excelling in trends number one, and what are the products that they are creating? So that you can then understand, you know, who are the leaders in these, in these uh, different industry spaces that you can be better versed on when you go into an interviewing experience. ChatGPT can be a great writer. Um, one of the things that you can think about is having some help from it in writing cover letters based on a job description and your resume. And so here's an example of a prompt that I gave it. I want you to write a professional cover letter with a maximum length of 275 words. Please analyze the following job description and that's where you would insert your job description. Please utilize the below resume to customize the cover letter to the job description. So first of all, I started off by giving it some context. I told it the style that I wanted. I wanted it to be professional and I wanted it to be a cover letter. 
and I gave it the parameters of the number of words that I wanted it to be. So all of that is important. The more detail that you give it, the more specific you can be, the better your outcomes can be. Um, I gave it some examples, right. it job description, and I, I gave it my resume as a reference point as well. And so let's take a look at what the output is here. Uh, I know that's gonna be too small for most of you to read, but your first impression might be, gosh, Rusty, that's way too long. I would never write a cover letter that length. Well, here's the great thing is that it's too long. You can just ask chat GPT to shorten it by X percentage, you know, shorten it by 50% or make it 150 words instead of 250 words. If you don't like the voice that it's written in, you can ask chat GPT to change that voice. You can ask it to make it more exciting or more humorous or more energetic. One thing I would suggest though, is first of all, you need to double check for any kind of errors, especially as it's trying to match up your job skills with a resume. Um, because uh, what, what, what it wants to do is it wants to please you. Uh, and so it can do things like exaggerate your qualifications. Or if for instance, the job description is only looking for 10 years of experience, but you actually have 25, it may just say that you have 10 years of experience in there. So you might need to proof and tweak. And it's also an opportunity for you to personalize and put your own fingerprints on it as well. So it can give you a great start, but you also don't want your resume to look like everyone else's. And so learning how to uh, use it and, and change the style and tone is important. Now, a lot of people have, have voiced concerns about, well, if everybody's using this technology, won't all the cover letters start to look the same? Well, that, that is a danger, but know that you can change, again, tone, style, and voice. You can even get it to analyze your own writing style and get it to write in your voice. And so an example that I like to give people is you can go to the internet and find a, a piece of text. For instance, take the, the preamble to the Declaration of Independence and take it to ChatGPT and ask it to write in the style and tone of Barack Obama and paste that preamble to the Declaration of Independence in there and see what the result is. And then next go in and ask it to rewrite it in the voice of Donald Trump or George Bush or any great orator that is out there. And you will see how it instantly adapts the style, tone uh, and voice of that text. And so you have that same ability and I would encourage you to learn and play that with that because it's a very important part to make sure you don't look like everyone else. You can also ask it to brainstorm common interview questions for your role or industry. Now, many of us are out there busy preparing our 50 behavioral questions. We wanna be able to talk to our top accomplishment, our greatest strength or our, our weakness or answer those questions about why we left our old job but you might be working in an area where you wanna prepare for questions that are specific to your industry or role. Uh, so you can ask ChatGPT to give you 10 questions if you're a social media manager um, or you're a, a program manager or a CFO, uh, and it will help to generate those questions for you to prepare. Now, some of this uh, GPT technology is uh, actually being integrated in tools outside of GPT. So here is a service uh, that's in beta testing right now. It's called Coaching Hub. Uh, and their tool is called Amy, where they cleverly integrated the letters AI uh, into Amy's name. Uh, and Amy actually uses ChatGPT as its platform uh, through APIs. And so as you interact with Amy, she's acting as a career coach with the GPT technology. So I'm, I'm a beta tester with Amy. Um, uh, we've speed dated for a while. And at this point, uh, I'm not continuing my relationship with her. I'm going back to ChatGPT, but rest assured these things are gonna continue to develop and get better. So one thing I wanna talk about today that's probably the most important thing is how to write a good prompt. So I said earlier, garbage in, garbage out, if you are uh, too general, too nonspecific, you might not get the answers that you are looking for. 
So I'd like you to think about ChatGPT as if you just got a fantastic intern to your company. Uh, they came out of a great school. Um, they're really smart and they're really eager to please, but they don't know your company. They don't know your brand. They don't know you. They don't know your presentation style. And so you need to give them the right reference point, the right scope so that they know, you know what they do need to do and what they don't need to do. So a couple of, of general guidelines for you to think about. Uh, first of all, start with the end in mind. Think about what you want that output to look like. Um, you saw me using tables in some of these. You saw me using bullet points. Sometimes it's gonna be a text or a cover letter. Um, so if you can identify what that format looks like and, and make sure you let ChatGPT know what that is. Make sure you're using simple language. You don't have to write a Shakespearean sonnet. In fact, simple can be better, uh, especially if you're being very specific with the information that you're asking for. You do wanna avoid asking ChatGPT multiple questions in one query. Uh, there's the potential for it to get confused about what you want the output to be if you're asking it to do multiple things, right? Just like a good employee. Um, so you can give it multiple steps, but don't ask it multiple questions. Uh, by all means, use examples like some of the ones that we saw today to give it a good reference point. And avoid using leading questions because it, it does want to please you. And unless you want a very specific uh, slant or a uh, political opinion, uh, try, try and uh, you know, stay away from questions that might lead it one way or the other. Very importantly, you want to test and iterate. So if you, you engineer a prompt and you're not getting the answer you want, first of all, hit regenerate, see what answer it gives you the second time around, but then go in and look at the, the language. What can you add? What can you tweak? Uh, do I need to add an example? Um, do I need to give it a little bit more information and then try it again? I, I think you'll eventually find you can get, uh, you know, beyond where your first results are. Uh, one thing to know is that uh, ChatGPT keeps a rolling list of all of your prompt history, which depending upon how you feel about security may be good or bad, but I like it because what I can do is I can go back to queries that I've done in the past and just change one or two things. So if I'm asking it to, to do a cover letter, I can go to an earlier version and just edit the prompt and, and copy and paste the new job description. And I don't have to rewrite the prompt each time that I do it. Um, uh, so it's, it's a great tool to be able to go back to. So this tool is not just for job search. Uh, folks, there's lots of different areas of your life that you can be using it in. Uh, an example is I had a friend who's um, going on a business trip to Spain and she said, uh, you know, I'm landing and I'm gonna have three hours of time before my first meeting starts. I'd love to explore the area. Well, what I, I asked ChatGPT to do was to go in and create a walking tour, a 90 minute walking tour from her hotel. And I just gave the name of the hotel. And I told ChatGPT the, the types of sites and attractions that she was interested in seeing. And so ChatGPT went out and created this point by point walking tour with distances and times and all the information about the sites that she would be seeing. And it routed her from her hotel and started her out and nine minutes later, brought her back in a circle to her starting point. Um, so there's ways of using it like that. But you know, also if you're a teacher out there, you know, if you teach for instance, Sunday school, like some of us do, um, you can use it in fantastic ways. So here's a prompt that I created. I will be teaching a Bible study course to young adults age 18 to 25. So you can make language that's appropriate to a certain age group. Um, if you're creating an Instagram post, you can generate it for that Instagram platform for that age group. Or if it's for LinkedIn and it's older and professional, you can do that. But here I created for young adults age 18 to 25. The class will have eight sessions. Each sessions will be approximately 45 minutes in length. Please create a course outline focusing on the Bible chapter of John, its key messages, and how it differs from other books in the gospel. 
And so I started with a course outline and here it gave it to me. And I know this is too small to see, but there's eight different sessions and it, it starts with an introduction and ends with a conclusion and focuses on different scriptures for each session. Well, then I can dig and I can drill down and say, now create me a lesson plan for session number one. And it came back and it told me the materials that I would need, talked about my introduction and what should be in the lecture section and ideas for breaking out into discussion groups and then coming back and, and having a conclusion. Um, so you can continue to, to kind of figure out how are the ways that this can save me time, uh, maybe help me brainstorm and build some structure to all different parts of your life. So uh, as Jeff mentioned, um, I created a prompt template, uh, which I'm, I'm making available to all of you, where you can just go in and cut and paste all of the prompts that you've seen in this presentation and uh, a number of others. Um, one of the changes that I've made, it is a little a report card that you see there where I actually tested and graded ChatGPT, Microsoft Bing, and Google Bard as to uh, how they performed with these prompts. And I graded them based on how well they followed the prompts, number one. Number two, how accurate their data was. And then number three, if there was any kind of creative element with the output, how creative they were. Um, and, and so you'll, you'll see some of them are better for certain types of tasks than others. Uh, generally, I found the original ChatGPT was still kind of the winner in my book, uh, but by all means, feel free uh, to experiment with all of these platforms. So that's it for the main presentation. I know some of you may have many questions. One thing that I would ask of you, uh, by all means, feel free to, to uh, reach out to me on LinkedIn and connect and make sure you mention uh, that you saw today's presentation so I know how we met. Uh, but I would ask all of you uh, to pay it forward. And if you are running across a great prompt that is helping people with job search, uh, please uh, share that with me. I know we have Alicia Hong on the call today. Alicia is one of those people who found a great prompt and, and sent it to me, and I incorporated it into the template so that it can be shared with others. So um, uh, in any event, that's all for today. Uh, Jeff, did we have any questions? Uh, we do. We have got, uh, we have several questions. Number one, what were your resources that help you learn about AI? Um, multiple. So I would say I, I did a lot of reading, uh, first of all, on the technology. Um, so like you, Jeff, I, I, I started very simply with information that was coming out from uh, the mass media. Uh, but I went in and started taking courses on Udemy probably three months ago. So as soon as I started to, to see the first courses pop up, um, I'm not sure if there are any on LinkedIn learning just yet. I would imagine there would be, but I started seeing things on Udemy very quickly um, and people who were doing very informal presentations, not so much about job search, but how to craft prompts and different ways and, and creative ideas of, of using the tool. Um, so there's, there's lots out there. There's a lot on YouTube these days. Um, have we stopped broadcasting at this point, uh, Jeff, by the way? Oh, we can, we can all hear you and see you. Okay. All right. Um, so, uh, yeah, there's, there's lots of different resources. Udemy was a good source for me. Um, you might check out some of the courses that are on there. They're broken into bite-sized pieces. And you can take a look at just some very specific areas if you want to. All right, another question, Gabrielle asked, can you include a checklist and then have it compared to your resume to see how well you follow the checklist? Now I'm assuming, Gabrielle, when you talk about checklist, you're talking about job description versus your uh, resume. Is that, what you're, is that what you're talking about? Yes, because I'm curious. Yes, you know, there could be like several different factors and I may ch have to check the change the checklist depending on length or font or, you know, any number of things. So I'm curious as to how the how it performs. I don't know if you've experimented with that. Well, the, the one thing uh, Je Jeff was on my presentation a couple of weeks ago and he had a question of can ChatGPT do a T-form cover letter and a T-form cover letter basically 
uh, not only has text, but it also, also kind of has a, a tabular format to it where it has the job description on one side and your qualifications on the other side. Uh, I went away and experimented and tried uh, multiple times to see if I could get ChatGPT to do that. Um, it does understand what a T format is. And so it can give you examples of a T format um, uh, cover letter but it really struggled right now uh, to do that kind of checklist of the job description says this, I have uh, that. Um, so that'll be something that I continue to, to kind of follow and see if it gets uh, any better. One thing I think you might be able to do is to have it analyze and ask it to identify any gaps. And so it might not do it exactly in a checklist format, but it might help to say, the cover letter says, or the, excuse me, the job description says this, but I am not finding this in your resume. Any other questions somebody has? Uh, so uh, Gabrielle also says, Bing has an A, Bing AI has a mobile app. Have you used that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so that's that's my primary Bing interface at this point on, on both my iPad and my iPhone. Uh, and it, uh, I haven't noticed any difference other maybe than a little bit the speed of which I get a response on my mobile device versus my desktop device. But um, yeah, that one, it's my understanding, is also using the GPT-4 technology. And uh, you've just briefly mentioned about BARD. Can you tell me a little bit about how the testing is going with BARD, what you're doing, what, what are you finding? Because uh, like I said, this past Sunday night on 60 Minutes, uh, the head of Google did a about 40 minutes talking about AI at Google. And I thought it was a really fascinating presentation. I'll be sure to include the links for everybody to watch. Yeah, so many of us may know that uh, there was a rush to get Bard out in early February. So, you know, ChatGPT made this huge splash. Everybody was talking about it. And, you know, folks, this, this technology is something that potentially could have a big impact to Google's business model um, when you think about it. You know, most of us are, are used to going out and being directed to websites. 90% uh, of all the traffic around the world goes through uh, Google and through Chrome. Um, and, and that's how Google makes its money. Um, and so now all of a sudden this tool comes up where you don't even have to go to a website, you can get it straight from the tool. So Google had kind of rushed to uh, get Bard out of the gate in early February. And when they did their, their press launch, uh, they had some challenges uh, in, in, in the sense that it did not perform well in its debut performance. Um, I am a beta tester for Bard. I've been using it for maybe three to four weeks now. I initially loved it. And then what I liked about it was uh, it was very quick. Uh, relative to ChatGPT. ChatGPT sometimes for me takes 30 seconds or a minute to write out an answer and, and Bard was giving me stuff in like eight seconds. So I loved that. And it was also sometimes giving me a little bit extra information that I, I hadn't asked for and it gave me additional points of context. And so I thought that was really cool. But when I got in and I started really trying to apply it uh, to the types of prompts that I was using it for for job search, it struggled a little bit more um, in terms of the accuracy of the data. Sometimes it just came back and said, I can't do that. And it, it didn't even try for me. So it feels like um, Google has taken a more conservative approach to the growth of their tool. I think they're trying to be sensitive to uh, a, a lot of the you know, undercurrents and fears that there are out there about this technology. And so they, they want to get it right. They don't want it to hurt their brand. Um, you know, feel free to, to try these, these, um, these tools on BARD. You might need to get on the wait list to be a beta, te beta tester. So you might be up, not be able to get onto the system today. It might take you a week or 10 days uh, to be approved for that. One of the things I thought was very fascinating, you know, that uh, the head of Microsoft, I can't remember his name, but what he was talking about Sunday night at 60 Minutes, he said he had a real issue with all of his engineers because some of the engineers want to push it out quicker. Some of the engineers said, no, we're not ready yet. We're going too quick. And it was where that 
line was to say, okay, we've got to get it out there. And I'm sure it was pushed out because of Bing and uh, chat GPT getting, becoming so popular. They had to get something out. Yeah, and even, even OpenAI, which is the company that created uh, ChatGPT, they're putting the brakes a little bit on some of their new releases. So there, there's been a, a question floating out there, when is, Chat, uh, when is GPT-5 going to come out? And uh, there was speculation that it would be you know, before the end of the year. The latest that I'm hearing is that they're in no rush um, to get that new model out there. Um, but I, I think we're going to continue to see growth and change. Um, you know, I, I'm seeing changes to these systems just in the last two to three weeks in the way that they're responding to, to queries. One of the things that I'm seeing, for instance, is that if you're using Bing, sometimes what Bing wants to do is, is kind of go back to that model of being a browser. So you will ask it a question. For instance, when I asked it to do the, the Sunday school Bible study, uh, outline, instead of creating that outline for me, what it did it is it wanted to direct me to a website that specialized on the chapter of John. Um, and, and it didn't want to kind of do the work until I went back and insisted for it to do the work. Um, so, you know, you can see it kind of wrestling with this model of, you know, do I want to be a web browser that works the traditional way? Um, or, or do I want to be, you know, an AI chatbot? Here's a great question. How and where do you even access ChatGPT and Microsoft Bing? <laughs> so ironically, just Google it. Just go to uh, ChatGPT, um, type that in, and it's going to take you to a company called OpenAI ChatGPT. Uh, and there you can uh, sign up um, uh, through your Google account. That's the way I do it. Uh, so you don't have to go out and create a new account. But um, yeah, it's, it's absolutely free. Uh, hey, Rusty. Great presentation. Yes. Oh my gosh, I'm glad I made it. Last time I was regretting making your presentation, but really thorough. I really appreciate how you graded all the different uh, variations. But um, I did something similar to what you did on the prompting for the curriculum, but I created myself a 90 day action plan on landing the next gig. And, um, and it dove down deeper too. So it was the same thing. But uh, I used the curriculum for just a 90 day action plan as a, it, it was a success coach coaching me through it. <laughs> just want to let you know, this was awesome. Thank, thank, thank you. you for the feedback. I think, you know, for everyone on the call, one thing to know is, you know, this tool doesn't have to be in a binary, you know, ask one question and get a single response. You can drill down and drill down and you can start at a very high level with what your problem is that you want to solve start at the 25,000 foot level ask it to help create the framework and the structure and then you can drill down into the individual uh components um and so alicia glad, glad to hear you're doing that yeah no and then um i also went to udemy so through the library card i've been finding resources through our library so i was getting ai um courses also on Udemy without any having to pay for any fees. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Uh, for folks, if, if, if you have a public library card in the state of Texas, you can go right on to their, uh, their website. You can access Udemy. You can access LinkedIn Learning without having to pay for it. You can access Reference Solution. There's all these great tools that are out there uh, that you can do right from your couch, uh, including learning more about ChatGPT. Anybody have any questions? I have a question, Jeff. Yeah. Hi, this is Walt Rusty. Hey, Walt. You know, when I look at my phone, sometimes I get in my car and it tells me I'm 18 minutes from home. And I really don't want it to know that much. And so what, what's going on with ChatGPT? How are the companies, you know, either Microsoft or Google, Keeping our data, keeping our information, keeping our prompts, keeping the response, all that sort of thing, and then maybe uh, are using that uh, to know just more about us. Uh, Walt, I don't have an answer for you. Um, that's a great question. And, you know, if, if you go on the internet, there's all of these ethical questions that are being raised. In, in addition to what you highlighted, uh, who owns content anymore, right? So you think about content creators that are generating contents for websites. 
and and they're building you know their their business model on bringing people to a website based on the content that they have well if there's a tool now that can just go out and scrape this information and consumers never have to go there you know what what's their reason to be what why, why do they even have to exist anymore do they own that stuff that they've created or or not so a lot of questions left to be answered Walt. Uh, Rusty, I have an answer for you on that. So last week there was uh, in Italy, Italy actually submitted a lawsuit against uh, OpenAI and then the uh, European Union actually uh, pursued. So now they're going to actually pay attention to that. So that might, like you said, slow down the next version of ChatGPT5, but it's happening as we speak. So it was uh, privacy um, so that it's impacting the privacy laws. And then on top of that, the ransomware is happening at every 11 to 12 seconds. So it's not if it's going to happen, it's when it's going to happen. And then all companies, businesses are being impacted. But not in the U.S., not right now. It's happening over there in, in Europe and Italy. All right. Anybody else? Anybody else have any questions? Uh, Rusty, are we? Yeah, hey, 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 Rusty, this is Leon. So I'm in transit, um, but I did want to ask does the, uh, and I enjoyed the presentation, by the way, does the chat GPT understand what an ATS is or have any kind of reference point for that? Um, I'm not sure I heard the question. Uh, Jeff, can you help me understand what the question is here? Can you repeat it again, Rusty? I mean, not rusty. Uh, yeah. Hey, sorry about that. Yeah, I just was curious if ChatGPT knows any kind of reference point to what an ATS system is, um, where it can evaluate how we would um, rank or how we would perform within that system. I think what he's asking is, as far as like an a how how does AI compare to like an ATS system to be able to compare document A to document B or job description to resume. Um, I, I don't have that answer for you. Um, what I can say is that, um, you know, it does have the ability to go in and look for specific words, keywords that uh, ATS systems might be looking for. So it has that functionality. I think one thing we need to be prepared for is that companies and workers are going to start to use this technology uh, in the interviewing process. Uh, so for instance, you know, you might be going in for an interview and a manager scans your resume with ChatGPT and asks it to create some questions based on gaps to, uh, you know, ask you about. Um, and so we, you know, we need to sort of have that end in mind and be preparing the same way on our side, be, be preparing for this to be used uh, by our workers, by uh, people in the hiring industry. Um, I don't think they're going to put the genie back in the box at this stage. Uh, Eileen asked, do these companies have access to content that's behind firewalls? Uh, great question. Uh, I don't know that. Alicia, have you heard about anything that's behind firewalls? No, no, no specifics on firewalls. But uh, if you think about it, it's like you said, it's what you come in and what you come out. But it has been verified and validated based on its data set. Like you said, uh, you had a reference in one of your PowerPoints of what it passed. Uh, the encyclopedias, the references from 2021. Right. It's looking at that data set and what's in that data set. The, the one thing that I will say that I experienced this week is, is I was asking it to do some research on salaries. And I found that the source that it went to was a database that I couldn't access uh, publicly to get the information out of it. I had to kind of join uh, an association to be able to do that. And so if I had not had access uh, to, to join that association, I, I wouldn't have been able to get that information on my own, but somehow ChatGPT was able to go into that system and retrieve uh, the data for me. All right. Anybody else? Yes, can I ask you, um, I don't know if anybody here is uh, familiar with any user groups. I'm going to look into that because you're right. Um, it's evolving and a lot of these questions are, you know, I guess <laughs> it's going to change 
depending on what's going on in the market forces and the legal world. Um, but I would love to continue to explore and I would love to do it with other fellow users. So I don't know if you had come across any user groups. Uh, user groups, uh, I have not been exploring those. One of the things is there are a few people on LinkedIn that are writing about uh, how to use it in your job search, uh, similar to some of the things that I've talked about. Um, and so you might do a, a Boolean search for ChatGPT to see where people are talking about it in their searches. Uh, sometimes they have like a daily tip uh, that they're that they're giving out. Um, sometimes they're really fundamental and they're not worth following. But every once in a while, you might find a, a little nugget of gold out there. And there, I mean, there are LinkedIn groups you can check on. There's Meetup.com. I mean, who knows? There probably there could be a group that's already been started on on Meetup. Uh, you can reach out to and find out. I started following a, a ChatGPT group on Facebook, but it, it ended up being not so useful in terms of the information. It was mostly humorous memes, which if you want a good joke or a good laugh, but not things that I could really take in and apply, which is what I was hoping for. Right. All right. Uh, anybody else? One last question from somebody. Yep. So this is Sue Dabrowski in New Jersey. Um, looking at everything that you presented to us, Rusty, would it be possible to take a job description and your resume and write the right prompts to say, create a list of questions they may ask me? Absolutely. absolutely. That would be cool. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So similar to the cover letter where I, I showed you how to use two different inputs, and I specifically asked for a professional cover letter of 250 words. Yep. What you can ask it to do is create interview questions based on those two reference points. So you can almost kind of use that as, as, a, as a starting point for comparing two documents and then just tell it what you want the output to be. Oh, Rusty, that gives me an idea. There's a person on YouTube, she's a career coach too. Her name's uh, Che T. O'Donnell. Could you use a person's voice on what they do as an input? Like you said, act as somebody like that. Yeah, and then so, be has really good questions and stuff like that too. Exactly. If, if they are publicly known and there's lots of information out there on them, you can ask, you know, ChatGPT to write in that but voice style and tone of person X. And if you're going out and using, you know, Martin Luther King or Muhammad Ali or whoever it might be, there's enough that's already there. But if there's not, if you give it a sample, and I would suggest giving it a good size sample of a writing style, ask it uh, to analyze it for style, tone, and voice, that will give you an output of what the style, tone, and voice is. And then you can ask it to use that in, in your writing going forward. Okay, thank you. This gave me the idea, thank you. All righty. Well, Rusty, thank you very much for your time. Great information. I just, uh, I, this is just, it's a fascinating subject for uh, everybody out there. If you have not put your contact information in the chat window, and I don't know you're with us, if I know you're out there, if I know you were part of this meeting, you give me your email address, whatever, I'll be sure to include Rusty's handout of all of his questions. Uh, there's a bunch of other information we'll include on chat GPT. Uh, and some of the links that uh, we've talked about today, I'll be sure to include all those in the email this afternoon, but that's only if I know you were with us today. So uh, please put your contact information in there. Uh, if you've done so, you know, give us your name, phone number, email address, position you're looking for, a couple of target companies, and then hit the return key. So Rusty, thank you very, very much for your time. Uh, I'm sure that, you know, if I see this again in two or three weeks, there'll be more new things to talk about. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'll keep updating and changing it. Uh, I think Foster's going to have me go to Frisco Connect uh, in early summer. And so there might be a few new prompts and a few new changes the next time I do this. Right. Well, Rusty, thank you very much for your time today. Absolutely. Right. Uh, Career DFW and Career USA, we're putting on training four days a week. Please join us next Tuesday. Ruth Lipsky will be with us at one o'clock central time to talk about uh, for LinkedIn Tuesdays, how to drive recruiters to your LinkedIn profile. Next Wednesday, you'll be able to watch a practice interview from the practice interview team. It will be on Zoom only. It will not be on Facebook, but Zoom only. You'll be able to watch an actual practice interview. 
And then next Thursday, Don Neblon will be with us to talk about networking 101. Uh, it's all basically about this, you know, networking is networking. It's getting out and asking questions, but everybody's got their own little way on how they do it. So uh, this session has been recorded. It will be on the Career DFW Facebook page and the Career USA YouTube channel. I'll get everybody the link to it this afternoon once I get it uploaded. On the Career USA YouTube channel, click on playlist because there's over 480 videos there, but click on playlist and then pick the list you want. In this case, you'll pick the North Dallas Plano Career Focus Group speakers. And then down below at the very bottom where it says view full playlist, click there and I'll become a list of all the different speakers and uh, dates in chronological order. It'll take a couple hours to get this presentation up. This probably won't be up till maybe four or five o'clock this afternoon, but I will send everybody out the link as soon as I get it uploaded. Uh, please join us today for lunch. Join us at Jason's Deli, 4801 West Parker Road, the northeast corner of Parker and Preston. You got to eat lunch. It's a great way to uh, get to know everybody who's here in the room. For those that are here in the room, we're going to hang out and talk for a little bit before we get ready to go to lunch. And uh, for everybody else, thank you for joining us today. Rusty, once again, thank you very, very much. Everybody have a great weekend.